Hi YouTube, this is Perry again in my home shop. The project I have today is a brake rotor that's warped. I'm going to show you how you can resurface this brake rotor using a bridge port with a rotary table. And when I'm done, the two surfaces are going to be parallel and there should be no run out. So let me illustrate what's wrong with this rotor. What I have right here is uh, it's a 5 tenths per division. You know, that's 5 ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, per division uh, dial test indicator and I've just got it mounted over here over the rotary table so whenever I rotate the rotary table it should show you the run out now this particular rotor has about uh, three and a half thousandths of run out on this face and this is the interface as you would see it uh, you know mounted to the hub so this would not be the side facing out Right now I've got it mounted face down, uh, so wheel mounting surface is facing down and bolted to the rotary table. The reason I have that is that's basically what I need to uh, machine this true to. Now this surface is four and a half thousandths, uh, or excuse me, three and a half thousandths, uh, you know, run out. And the other surface, I haven't measured it, but I'm sure that there's run out on that surface, which is not parallel to this surface. So by machining the inside surface first and having it clamped on the wheel mounting you know, face, then I can get this surface flat. And then when I flip the rotor over and machine the other surface, it will be parallel to this surface. So let me show you how I'm going to machine this. What I've got here is just a battery powered uh, cordless driver drill and uh, it actually spins pretty pretty slowly so what I can do is just turn that slow and I'll get a basically a power feed on my uh, rotary table here now for the actual cutting tool what I've got here it's a it's a fly cutter uh, for Bridgeport it actually it's a face engagement uh, the way it mounts to the spindle and then I've got an indexable carbide tool in there and I'm just going to fly cut this. Uh, I'm going to try to get it, uh, it's a little bit this way of center and uh, I've got it pretty well lined up. I mean this fly cutter covers a distance much larger than this. But What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down and then I'm going to actually machine the whole surface uh, until I have a, a consistent surface uh, that uh, has a good finish. Okay, let's get machining here. Now I'm in uh, high range, uh, 500 RPM. And uh, I'm just going to lock that arbitrary distance. Feed it up with me. So on this first pass, it didn't clean up completely, so I'm going to have to make a finish pass, obviously, but uh, that finish is actually really, really nice. 
I'll have to come in for a close-up and show you. Uh, you know, when you buy rotors, they're usually blanchard ground uh, so that they have uh, a little bit of texture which allows the pad to bite and seep. Whenever you uh, actually turn a set of rotors in like a, you know, Amco machine or whatever, uh, you once you're done turning it, you actually have to take like some 220 grit sandpaper, then you have to rough the surface up to give it some bite so you can bed the new pads. Now, with this technique, you actually already have a little bit of bite in the surface, just like it was blanchard ground, and that way you don't really have to worry about uh, hitting it with some sandpaper. It's just, it's got a really, really nice finish. I'll have to show you that. Okay, so uh, I've done my best with exposure and uh, lighting to try to give you an idea how, how good of a finish that actually uh, gave me just on the first pass. I, I'm totally uh, satisfied with that finish. And uh, for the, you know, the finish pass, I'll just uh, run another pass until this cleans up right here. And, uh, you know, probably just two thousandths or so. And uh, this side will be done. Okay, so time for the finish pass. I uh, just uh, kind of checked everything over real quick uh, and uh, turned on my little DRO here so I have a repeatable stop. Make sure everything is clear. Okay, bring this down to zero. So let's uh, tap the indicator down here. Okay. So now we've got a zero. Moment of truth. I see a very small amount of waviness, which I'm not really all that surprised about because I wasn't keeping a super accurate speed, so the the uh, cutting pressure varied as the speed varies. I'd call that uh, satisfactory. You know, there's you know a few tenths maybe, but it's once it gets bedded in on the car, it's not going to matter. So uh, for this next task, I have to center this on the rotary table pretty accurately because this cutter actually has a, a negative uh, rake to it in relation to that surface because this fly cutter, the angle of the fly cutter is a bit steeper than the back rake uh, on this insert right here. So. I have to get pretty darn centered up on this so that as I rotate it around it doesn't you know kind of rotate off center in an orbit and then this contact the inner part of the uh, disc right here. So there's a, a relief right here so I'll have plenty of clearance to be able to actually uh, machine uh, just the the friction surface. So I'm just going to kind of yeah, that, that works pretty good right where it's at. So I just have this drill chuck right here mounted. Uh, it's on a Jacobs or a Morris number no. 3 taper. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it in the center. And then I've got two holes right here that I'm going to clamp this down uh, to the rotary table with. Okay, let's see how much run out we got on this side of the rotor. Now, I didn't bother to indicate zero and whatnot on this. So you're going to see it as I see it. So minus a half, zero, plus a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, 
hour and a half. Okay, we come back down to zero. Okay, so we've got about a mm, total of 6,000 to run out on that face, which I can tell you from actually driving the vehicle that uh, these rotors were just absolutely terrible. The, the brake feel was just rotten, and uh, it, it, was, uh, it was just <laughs> it was no fun. So this is really just an experiment. Uh, I'm going to buy a set of new rotors for it in a you know, month or so. So this was just an experiment to, you know, try this out and, you know, show people how it can be done. Okay, so you're going to see this from a perspective that I'm not, because I'm going to be on the safe side away from the hail of chips that will be coming off. But, uh, you know, that's the beauty of cameras. And my DRO's battery is going bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, that's uh, that's about thirteen hundred RPMs. So I'm just gonna get this close. Okay, that's as good as any. I'm getting them tilted. Okay. Well, that was a decent final pass. Seeing some pitting in the metal, I think. I have a feeling that's where the brake pad sat whenever it was parked for a couple of years, because I see, I see rust. There's like staining in the cast iron, and there's some rust down in some pits there. That's always possible. Although it could be porosity in the casting, that's possible too. Well, we're here or there, it'll work. Okay. So, it looks pretty even, the thickness, you know, side to side in the center of the core there, because the core kind of moves around a little bit. So, I'm going to pull this off and, uh, you know, try to find some marking that indicates minimum thickness and then uh, mic it. I'm not going to stick an indicator on it and, you know, all that, just because... I'm confident that this side is now parallel to this side as good as I can get it with the tools I've got, so not much point in checking it. But you know, it's a valid approach to fixing a problem when uh, you've got a set of rotors that are warped. So I looked it up online, and uh, the minimum rotor thickness for this year Volvo is 23 millimeters. Uh, new rotors are 24 to 24 and a quarter millimeters. Well, 23 millimeters is 900.9062, or 906 thousandths, uh, and then two ten thousandths. Um, this rotor measures 912.4, eh, you know, or 912 thousandths, four tenths, but... Uh, it's just a smidgen. It's, you know, a couple pieces of paper above minimum thickness. But anyway, uh, you know, that'll work. It'll get me there. And uh, I will have an opportunity to replace them in the next couple of months.